الحمد لله وصلاة وسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continuing in our series about <coughs> clarification of the Salafi da'wah that one of the principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah uh, as is has been articulated on the tongues and in the writings of the Imams of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah from the past up until now from the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala uh, to uh, in the tabi'een with ba'a tabi'een especially the tabi'een the time of the tabi'een and it's ba'a tabi'een and after them that from the usul of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah the i'tiqad of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is to refute Ahl Bid'ah and this is a thing which is uh, misunderstood uh, in this day and age as many of the people the general Muslims do not understand reputation do not want any part of reputation and when you talk to a, the average Muslim in many places around the world they'll just say I'm Muslim so and so is Muslim he's Shia I'm Sunni this it, you know there's no difference there's no difference in Aqidah we're just we're just Muslim and so they don't understand that in fact there are immense differences as we said the Prophet وسلم, said if al Yahud al that the Shahid being that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, <coughs> said that there would be seventy three Muslim sects and all of them in the fire except one and, uh, along with these other groups uh, that uh, deviated and this lets us know that there is a uh, a saved sect and that there is a creed that we must adhere to so it's not simple enough that we can say you know this one supplicates to Abdul Qadir Jailani but he says la ilaha illallah. this one makes tawaf around graves and he you know loves Sayyid Bedawi and sometimes supplicates to him this one uh, <clears throat> you know is is all about politics and this is what gives him his uh, his uh, strength in Islam and this is what he calls to in Islam it's just about all the political crisis that Muslims follow and so we need a political solution and a political methodology this shows us that Muslims are divided into different points of Aqidah and different points even in uh, fiqh or methodology even in, in methodology on how they understand the text with that being the case we have to know that as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said man kana ala alayhi was hobby and those who are upon what I'm upon and my companions upon that that is our roadmap to success and and salvation and we have to adhere to it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Hold on, all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So we're ordered to be one ummah and not to divide. And we're ordered to be one ummah based on holding on to the Hablillah, which is the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa everything that contains within it, meaning a creed first and foremost, uh, uh, you know, fiqh, Madhab, Minhaj, all those aspects of the religion that we are to hear, we are to be on one, not many. And there are countless evidences from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about division. But what I wanted to discuss, Ahabitatillah, is that with this division being something that has occurred in the religion, that Ahlul Sunnah according to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Madhab of the Salaf has a prescription for that and that is refuting innovation. And why do we refute innovation? One of the reasons Habitifillah is in order to preserve the religion. Another reason Habitifillah is to preserve the creed of the Muslim. You know, so that so that Islam stays in its pristine form and that people are not affected in a harmful way by newly invented manners. As the Prophet said, every innovation is a leading astray, and every, um, uh, and every leading astray leads to the hellfire. 
So we do not want ourselves to go to the hellfire. We do not want to be like the Jews and the Christians. Those people who, when they, when clarity came to them, that's when they began to divide. That's when they began to split, and that's when they began to go against the message that was given to them. So we see that the Sunnah of the Muslims is that they are following that same way. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Men woman, whoever resembles a person, he is from them. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, that you would follow the way of those who came before you Hand spin by hand spin, arms length by arm spin length, had to, uh, until one of them went into the hole of a lizard, you would follow them. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Or they said, are they the Jews and the Christians, Ya Rasulullah? The Prophet Sallallahu said, who else? So letting us know we would follow their sunnah. We'd follow their sunnah in, in bringing shirk back into the ummah. We'd follow their sunnah in bid'ah. And so Ahabat Tavillah, this is for re preserving the religion, the creed, the methodology of Islam. Otherwise, uh, by innovating in the religion, it doesn't mean using a microphone, doesn't mean using a car now instead of a camel, doesn't mean using a plane or using a microphone, but innovation is talking about those things in ibadah, those things that have to do with our worship and those things which are um, dictated by the shara. For example, Innovation in worship, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu supplicated to Allah, Allah But now you have many people who say La ilaha illallah and they supplicate to Abdul Qadir Jailani or they supplicate to uh, Rafa'i or they supplicate to uh, many other, uh, some of them saints, some of them are some of the worst facets in the dunya. But you have the point being a habit of Allah is they yasraf ibadah li ghayri Allah. So they commit shirk which is the opposite of Tawheed. And it's the opposite of Islam. You know, polytheism is the opposite of monotheism. So they have innovated with bid'ah, mukaffara, with bid'ah which takes you out of the fold of Islam. Then there are those who make uh, innovation in acts of worship. For example, in their prayer, maybe that you find in many Muslim countries especially, that you'll find uh, people who declare their niyyah on their tongue. They will openly say, you know, I'm going to pray uh, Dhuhr and it's going to be four units of prayer and I'm and this is it with the Imam and da 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 Allahu Akbar. They do this. Wallah Musta'an. So this is a a, 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 a bid'ah in mu'amalat or, or in, in fiqh uh, ibadat. Okay? And so with this being the case, Ahabatullah, it shows us that innovation is a religion and as the Prophet said, uh, that it is rejected. It's all in the, the fire. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, قَالَ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَقُولُ مَنْ أَحْتَثَ فِي أَمْرَنَا هَذَا مَا لَيْسَ مِنْهُ فُورَدْ Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So that means that act of ibadah is rejected. So Islam, so by refuting those people who are uh, innovating in the religion or have spoken with some innovation or have done an act of innovation this is in order to preserve Islam in its pristine form and it's in order to protect the Muslims from the harm of innovating in their religion and going to strains and getting the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there are so many ahkam with regards to Ahl bid'ah but I wanted to mention just this very important point that the people do not seem to understand, for example, in the past I've made some uh, videos about just a few people that I've, I don't spend my time on those issues really talking about individuals, but sometimes when it seemed that it was necessary, then I felt there was a maslaha. So I spoke about Imran Hussein and uh, Yasser Qadi and uh, Nu'man Ali Khan. Those are about the few main people that are known that I have spoken about because things were either sent to me and you know the mistakes were very open and they were very necessary to refute because these people have a, a, a great status 
in the especially English speaking uh, world. And so that those mistakes were absolutely necessary to uh, refute. And so when we refute someone, although in the cases that I mentioned, I did mention that they are muqtadi'a, that in my view, that they're muqtadi'a because they have a whole methodology, like a whole package that they are innovating. It's not just like a slip of the tongue. It's not just one mistake, but they have openly declared their methodology of understanding the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah with big issues, sometimes dealing with creed, sometimes dealing with methodology. And so with that being the case, Ahabat this is something necessary from the religion. And a point that I want to make, and this is more addressing Salafis, is that when a scholar uh, speaks about someone that does not necessitate that they're an innovator because no one as as the as uh, Imam Malik said he said rahimahullah ta'ala he said kullu kullu uh, rad wa yurad illa sahiba hadha qabr wa kama qal Imam Malik said what means rahimahullah ta'ala that everyone can have their uh, everyone refutes and can be refuted. Or in another ruwaya, ru everyone uh, can have their statements rejected or taken, except the inhabitant of that grave. Meaning that even the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala, majma'in, they had ijtihadat that wasn't always a correct, but they were rewarded with two rewards if they got it correct and one reward if they were mistaken. And <clears throat> that does not necess necessitate because someone uh, does a mistake that they're an innovator or that someone even falls into an innovation that they're necessarily an innovator. So all of these things have certain rulings and ahkam and details which we must have knowledge about before we begin to speak about and declare everyone uh, an innovator. And a last thing I wanted to mention as some of the, the many of the youth now because of certain scholars and their falling out with other scholars have come up with some their ijtihadat and with principles, for example, one of the principles that they say is, is they actually believe that they can force you to take their view. And this is incorrect. And this is this is this is actually an innovation that they have fallen into. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has spoken about this, and so many before that the Salaf have spoken about these these principles that you cannot force people. No one two people are going to always agree. Listen to the statement of Imam Dhahabi with regards to the science of Jarwa Ta'deel. Now we're talking about the science of Jarwa Ta'deel. This is talking about the Ruat of Hadith. So also this applies to, uh, uh, you know, speaking about someone who makes a mistake. All those either different sciences and we have to acknowledge that as well as our ulama like Imam Fuzan, Imam Abdul Mahsan al-Abad, uh, you know, clarify for us. So. Uh, Imam al Dhahabi says, We neither claim that the Imams of Jarwa Ta'deel are infallible or free from making occasional mistakes, nor that they are free from speaking with harshness with people they have enmity and antagonism with. For it is known that much speech of the contemporaries about each other within disputes is not to be taken into consideration. Look at this. This is all the more the case when a man who a scholar disputes with has been deemed as credible by a group of scholars who are fair in their speech. Look at that. That is high powered. If we an uh, analyze this, and I'm not going to bring any more text from this. This is high powered here, Habit Filal. And the reason I say, and it shows us that the Imams of Jarwa Ta'deel, and they're just talking about the preserving the hadith of the Rasul, they had differences. They had differences. And some of them were sometimes harsh because they're human beings. And because as Sheikh Farqos, and this is taken from Sheikh Farqos, one of our ulama of Ahl Sunnah in uh, Jazair, uh, in his statement about Jarwa Ta'deel being an issue of ijtihad, it's an issue of ijtihad. So when you try to force people, that's Jarwa Ta'deel. So what about Nakhla uh, Nakhla Mukhalif? What about speaking about a, a particular individual who uh, has nothing to do with Jarwa Ta'deel? Because Jarwa Ta'deel is talking about the science of the ruwa, of the you know the science of Hadith. Here we're talking about, for example, you see a difference. For example, we have many scholars now from Ahl Sunnah that are differing. And there, unfortunately, certain groups of the ulama 
And I say groups because they seem to have muafaka on certain principles, and they are attacking many of their brothers from Ahlul Sunnah, from Kuwait, from Yemen, from, it doesn't matter, around the world, to Jordan. Jordan, I think, has been written off completely. And this is a this is a, a, a very shameful thing, in which is causing division between Ahlul Sunnah and confusion amongst the youth. Marriage is even split, and and I, and I bear witness to that. That we we've seen this. Subhanallah. Yesterday I was on the bus and I met a, a, a Salafi here in, in in Ethiopia. We just happened he he knew English and he helped me. And we got to talking. He was telling me that many of the students of Sheikh Yahya Hajuri are in, uh, you know, have Marrakesh here, and that they have differences. Because I, I said so. Obviously, they probably have differences with the, the Ikhwan, because I know a lot of the brothers from Medina. Because some of them we used to sit in Durus together and study with certain Mashaikh together. And then we mentioned their names, and he said, "Yeah," and he said, "Yeah," da 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 da. And he said, and he even mentioned to me about uh, a marriage that divided, and they had six children because of the differences between. <laughs> uh, s certain scholars. So it shows us that the uh, Habitifillah that we cannot force one another. That these are issues of ijtihad. These are issues, you know, of of striving. If the person is even sincere, you know that that's something else. We we can't make those judgments. But and that sometimes the scholars, it can be personal. When you look at some of the refutations, and that's why I like those books, because I like to be able to look and distinguish. I like to see a Rad Almi, and I like to see Rad Ghayda Almi, because then you can distinguish and say, SubhanAllah, I don't believe the Shaykh was given the haq there, because look at the reasons he gave, and you know, you, if you have the ability to do so, you can look in those texts, and you look according to the Qawaid that you've learned from Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, and you can place it on that scale. The point being the Habit of Allah, I can't force you to take my view about Yasir Qadi. I can't force you to take my view about Nu'man Ali Khan, and I don't really care what your view is, but I only warn you from sincerity because the Prophet ﷺ said, Adina Nusiha, that the religion is sincere advice. And we have to know that these are issues of ijtihad, and we look to those people who come with the strongest adilla, and we have to look in and weigh, weigh the things if you have the ability to do so. If you don't, then perhaps you will just blind follow and and if that, that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do until you are in a better uh, state of affairs. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.